Greetings, listeners. Your old haunts are back. Prepare yourselves for season two of Paranormal Hunt with Kelly Sturba and guests. Leave the lights on. The Spooky Stories podcast begins now. Hi, I'm Keely Sturva with Century 21 Tri-Cities. Welcome to Paranormal Hunt Season 2 Spooky Stories. Today is Episode 4, Serial Killers. Today I'll be focusing on some information I was able to find on some serial killers that either passed through the area or that grew up or were born in the Tri-Cities. First off, we have Wesley Allen Dodd. He was born in Richland uh, July 3rd, 1961. He claims he was never abused or neglected, but the words I love you were never said to him. And so that led, I guess, to where he kind of felt neglected a little bit and didn't feel the love in his home. And he ended up um, assaulting and murdering three young boys across, mostly in the Vancouver area, in that area, in, in 1989. He was arrested later in 1989 after failing to abduct an attemption to abduct a six-year-old at a movie theater and got caught. Um, He was sentenced to death and he was executed January 5th, 1993. But he was, he did, he was born here and he, a lot of his life was here in the Tri-Cities and then they ended up moving to the, the Vancouver area and, and that's why he was, that's where he was. It's kind of spooky to think about if he had stayed in the Tri-Cities, that's probably where his murders would have been. But kind of crazy to think that we had a, a serial killer in the <laughs> born in the Tri-Cities area. There was also, um, I saw lots of comments and stuff that during Ted Bundy's days that he had passed through the Tri-Cities and there was a guy who saw Ted Bundy at a convention in Richland during his spree and during that time there were um, some unsolved mysteries locally. Not sure if he was connected to them or not but when he confessed to so many murders that he did across the states that he did do his murders Um, authorities believe that there was quite a few more that he did that he didn't confess to. So it makes you wonder, you know, if, if he did commit one here when he was here, because he went to WSU and, um, he was, you know, he was from Seattle. So I think most of his stuff started there and then he went, you know, moved around, but we're so close to Seattle and with him being at WSU and being in Richland at a convention. Um, I know during the time of his murders, there was a murder in, uh, at the Tri-City Herald. Um, a young girl was found and so, and I, it went unsolved. They never found out who did it. So was it him? Was it someone else? You know, kind of, kind of interesting, but kind of spooky to know that he was in our area. Good thing he's no longer alive, though. <laughs> so, and then there's uh, a lot of people probably have heard of Sharon Tate. She was crowned Miss Richland in 1959. She lived in Richland from 1955 to 1959. Um, she was known as the Richly Be- Richland Beauty Queen, and she was murdered by the Manson cult, uh, cult in 1969. She was eight and a half months pregnant at the time of her murder. And um, so that was kind of a, you know, she was beautiful, beautiful lady and um, got, you know, in that cult and got murdered. Then there was, I found a guy, I had not heard of him, uh, not a lot of information on him, but his name was Warren Leslie Forrest. And he's believed to be connected to several murders throughout Washington which again, there's wonder if he's connected to some in the Tri-City area, Tri-City area during his time. There's also the I-5 killer. And he murdered all along I-5. So there's Oregon, uh, California, Washington, and all along there, there's in several c- cities along the way um, that he was, you know, he was caught. 
Um, it, this was the late seventies and eighties and, um, his name was Randall Woodfield. So kind of creepy that these people passed through, not sure if they, you know, committed any real crimes or anything in looking up, uh, you know, serial killers that passed through the tri cities or, or that were born here or whatever. I did come across, there are several unsolved crimes and there are some, there's an article I found, it just, like there was some unsolved murders that made them wonder if there was, you know, a serial killer here locally um, years and years ago. There's also a woman who is, um, has been missing for 40 years and it was really sad. She's just a young mother that just disappeared and she's been missing. So for since like 1977 or 78 or something like that. And um, so there's a lot, a lot more crime. We just think of, I always think of like maybe local gangs and things like that. But there's, when you start digging, there's a lot of creepy serial killer disappearances, weird stuff that have happened here that um, I just think that we don't all know about. So that's the information that I was able to dig up and what that I felt the most um, creepy, you know, that it's just creepy to think of a serial killer born here, creepy to think of Ted Bundy Pat being here in Richland, Washington at a convention during his murdering days, trying to pose as a normal person and what he could have done. Um, just scary to think of that. So. But that's, that's all I have for the serial killers of the Tri-Cities right now. If anybody has any information, knows of anything, please let me know. Thank you all for joining and listening in today on my uh, series on Paranormal Hunt Spooky Series uh, episode for serial killers. I appreciate all you listening and tuning in. And stay tuned for the final episode and that is phi delta theta in walla walla and i'll be discussing it's a brief one but i'll be discussing um, its spooky backstory <laughs>